Alright, uh, some new fight news here with the brother Blood Boxing. What up, Blood? What's up, bro? Yeah, we're going to do a quick little follow-up to the other video about uh, Mayweather and Pacquiao ducking their legacies and uh, Andre Ward being number one pound-for-pound pound fighter. I want to say, first of all, man, um, just, just just speaking for me, because me and Blood are two different people. We're grown men. We get along great and respect each other's opinion. We don't agree on everything, but, you know... I want to say this, man. I really don't care if you're mad because I say something that you don't like about Floyd Mayweather. Because one thing that really irritates the fuck out of me, really fucking irritate me, is, you know, I dedicate my life to speaking and helping black people deal with black issues, okay? In my community, on YouTube, wherever I'm at, that's what I do, right? Sports is something I do as a hobby, right? What irritates me is that Black people are black, pro-black when it's convenient for them. You know what I'm saying? Like, nobody, all last year me and Blood was doing videos, talking about social issues, getting pages taken down, getting our shit flagged down, and, you know, we had a handful of people that rolled with us through the whole shit. Right? Everybody kept saying, let's get back to boxing. Get back to boxing. Then, when we talk, say one thing about Floyd Mayweather that you don't like, first thing you do is start trying to play this race card. Oh, well... Oh, uh, we got to be pro-black. Oh, well, we got to... Shut the fuck up. Who the fuck you think you're talking to? This is what I do. This is what the fuck I do, man. I'm not no part-time, half-assed revolutionary. This is what I do. Fuck that nigga, dog. I'm not finna sit here and let you dudes disrespect my ancestors by putting Floyd Mayweather on the same pedestal as the motherfuckers who put in real work out here. Fuck that. Floyd Mayweather's a great fucking boxer. That's it. I don't give a fuck. If you think he's greater than that, if you got him on the same level as Marcus Garvey, Elijah Muhammad, Malcolm X, you ain't shit. Fuck you. Go ahead, Blood. Mm. Mm. Um, well, I don't even, I can't add nothing to that. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that one. Um, see, the thing about it is, man, with Mayweather, I have two different views. I have my view of just, you know, um, a guy who's concerned about the man, Floyd Mayweather. And then I have my view as a fight fan, you know, and as a fight fan, I'm very critical. Yeah. Um, what he does outside of the ring, that's his business. I don't really think he portrays a positive image, but that still is his business. But in regards to the fight game, he's a cherry picker. To me, he's been a cherry picker. Some guy on the, uh, we were responding to some comments said that was, said that, um, he actually said that 78 said Floyd was a cherry picker. No, it was me who said that. And the reason I said it is because he's been cherry picking for years now. Like, shit, in 2002 and 2003, I was a flow mo. I mean, Floyd couldn't do nothing wrong. I, I, um, followed him ever since he was, um, in the Olympics. Right. Because I was a big fan of Roger Mayweather. I didn't really know Floyd Sr. too well. A little before my time. But I followed um, his uncle, Roger. And, you know, I used to watch his fights all the time. So in 96, when I saw Mayweather, I was like, oh, who go um, Roger nephew right here. Right. So around 2002, 2003, I wanted to see him. I can't remember what year it was, but I wanted to see him fight. You remember Steve Johnson? Yeah, yeah. I wanted to see him fight Steve Johnson, okay? It didn't come through. You know, I, I, I wanted to see him fight Casamayor. That didn't come through, okay? Those are two fights that I wanted to see. Now, I'm talking 2002, 2003, 10 years yeah. ago. So that was my first um, kind of criticism that he should fight these guys. Instead, he ended up fighting Castillo. He fought him twice. Okay, he fought only four times as a lightweight, okay? Right. Two of those fights as a lightweight was against Castillo. Some people believe Castillo won the first fight. Okay, so people want to say that he reigned for, for six. Some guys wrote a comment saying that Floyd's been on top for 16 years. Since when has he been on top, though? Like, how has he been on top? He was a lightweight. In 2002 and 2003, fought four times. Two of those fights was against Castillo. Okay, so what did he do spectacular as a lightweight? Not much. Shit, he 
it is that one of those two times people could argue he lost to Castillo. So to me, his career defining moment is Diego Corrales. Right. It's the only young prime fighter that he fought with Diego Corrales. That's it. That was like, you know, that had a real good status, like a real true, legit status in his division at the time. Okay? Yeah. In 2004, he went to light work. He fought Corley, okay? He fought Chop Chop Corley, went the distance. Um, he did look spectacular, but that provided me a different style to see Mayweather matched against Corley. Right. Which, to me, he didn't look as dominant against Corley as he had looked against some other fighters. Um, he fought the guy Brucellas, um as the um, light welter. Um, who else did he fight as a light welter? I think those are the only ones he had as a light welter was those fights, because he moved up after that and fought Mitchell to kind of move him into the welterweight division. He moved in, he fought Mitchell. I'm just trying to break this shit down, yeah, okay? Right. Okay, so he moved in, he fought Mitchell. Now, I would have liked to have seen him fight a number of other people. You know, there was um, um, Miguel Cotto, Junior Witter. Um, there was Vivian Harris, there was Freitas. There was a couple of other guys that I think he would have beat them all, personally. But I still didn't get a chance to see him fight these guys. Still. You know, he picked and chose who he was going to fight. And um, it usually seemed like he picked slower opponents. Like, he hasn't fought too many. He fought Zab Judah, but he hasn't fought really too many athletic fighters. Mitchell was way past his prime. Mitchell was pretty athletic. But maybe four years before then, he should have, you know, uh, for, uh, a Mitchell from four years before the time he fought Mayweather would have been more appropriate. So I I'm just saying, he never ran. He was never the man in Walter Wade. When it came time for him, when the competition stepped up, and you had Margarito, Cotto, Williams, Claudi, Mosley, Berto, Pacquiao on his way up, he decided to retire. So yes, I was crit critical because he still had not ruled any divisions. He still had him rule no divisions. So I was still like, when is this man going to put his shit on display and really do something? Right. He, so he opted to retire. These guys went on ahead and fought each other. He came back, he fought Marquez. There was some criticism that Marquez was not, you know, was too small and this and that. It went through. Um, he fought Victor Ortiz. That was a, a, a very controversial ending. To me, he just doesn't have the resume that the greats had before him. And then he had the nerve to come on to the TV and say that he's greater than Sugar Ray Robinson when he ain't did nothing that's even that you can even compare. You can't even begin to compare the resume. One interesting fact is that a lot of people ask us, you know, why is and how is Andre Ward ranked number one right now, and Floyd Mayweather uh, not be number one pound for pound? Um, an interesting fact is that Floyd Mayweather, since 2003. When he was a lightweight, has only defended his title one time, one time against Ricky Hatton. Okay, he moved up from lightweight in uh, 2005. He fought Arturo Gatti for the junior welterweight title. He never defended that title. He moved up to face uh, Baldemir. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know he fought Judah too, but he fought Baldemir for the WBC title in 2006. He didn't defend that title. He moved up and fought Oscar De La Hoya in 2007 for the junior middleweight title. He didn't defend that title. He went down to back to uh, fight Ricky Haddon to defend his uh, welterweight title. Then retired, right? Came back, fought some other fights, but he didn't have the title. So he then in 2011 fights Victor Ortiz for the WBC uh, welterweight title. He doesn't defend that title. He goes up and fights Miguel Cotto at 154 for the junior middleweight title and still hasn't defended neither one of these titles. Like, this shit is crazy when you're talking about pound for pound. How can he be pound for pound? Andre Ward, in two years, has defended his title five fucking times in two years. Like, and, you know, so how, why wouldn't Andre Ward be number one? 
Floyd has defended his title one time in nine years, and you still saying that he's the number one pound for pound guy. Henry Armstrong defended his title 19 fucking times at welterweight. Okay, that's a legacy. Floyd does not have a legacy past. 130 pounds where he defended his title eight times. After that, it's just bullshit. Yep. Yeah, and you know what? The thing is, is that these guys would use as an excuse that, hey, he beat 16 world um, champions. So, belts mean something to them right there. So, obviously, he ain't defending no belts. So, obviously, belts don't, don't really mean shit. It doesn't mean anything to be a champion. You know? It yeah. doesn't mean anything to actually be a champion. You know, there's so many belts out there, you could go and grab any belt. So it doesn't even mean nothing if somebody has fought 16 world champions or whatever. You know, there's more world champions now than there was back then. Well, but right there, I don't really see how anybody could have Floyd as their number one pound for pound when this man is not even defending his belt. Right. He's not defending his belt. And uh, another guy brought up a comment. He said that um, that Floyd had a heavy accomplishment when he defeated the man at Junior Middleweight, which was Oscar De La Hoya. But Oscar De La Hoya was never the man at Junior Middleweight. When he moved up to Junior Middleweight, there was other guys there. The, the, the German guy was there who, who, who lost to Martinez. At that time, he was undefeated. But, you know, I think Floyd would have beat him, but I would have preferred to see him fight either Winky White or Vernon Force. Yeah. Vernon Force was in the division Winky White was skipping between that and middleweight or something at the time. I remember. Yeah. And I remember thinking like, shit, it would be nice to see him fight either Winky White or Vernon Force and then those are different type of style. But yeah. he didn't take those type of fights. And that's why he can't be compared to great fighters. Because great fighters did take challenges like that. He did it. And you know what? He fought particular fighters while he was cherry picking off of that tree. And, and that's I how I see it. You know, and you know what, man? I still think he's a great fighter. Technically, yes, he is great, but he has only looked good against fighters who suit his style. I think guys like Winky Wright um, and Vernon Forrest would have brought something different to the table. Yeah, I agree. And he, you know, that just, it just, some shit can't be disputed, okay? When you're talking about nine year span and only defending your title one time, okay, when you didn't have all these belts and you're only defending one title, you know, you only defended it one time against Ricky Haddon, who wasn't even a ranked welterweight at the time. Ricky Haddon was a, the junior welterweight champion who you defended your title against. So, like, I'm not hating, I'm not dissing for it. I'm just trying to put in perspective here. Like, Bernard Hopkins defended his IBF fucking title. 20, 20 defenses of his IBF title. 20 fucking defenses. That's real shit, man. That's like, that's building a legacy. Something to remember in that weight class. Floyd has not done that, man. It's, it's, it's a lot of bullshit in this, in, in this situation here to be comparing and saying he's greater than this guy and he's greater than this guy all time when he has not even defended his titles. He, he wins a belt from a guy and then all of the guys who rank number one, like, it was years where Paul Williams and Miguel Cotto and Antonio Margarita, all these guys was ranked, and Floyd chose to retire and shit like that. Like, he wasn't defending none of these titles. He would come back and say, all right, this guy got the title. Uh, I beat him. he go fight him for the title, then step back and go to another weight class. Like, I'm tired of all this jumping around. I said this before about Adrian Broner. I I'm tired of fighters jumping around. I want to see somebody go to a weight class, beast that weight class, okay, so that we can properly judge your skills and, and, and uh, you know place you all time or whatever whatever the fuck we want to do as fans. Andre Ward, since beating Kessler, already five times he's defended his title. Five fucking times since 2010. All right, so you can't. It's no reason for him not to be number one pound for pound if May if Mayweather has only defended his title once in nine I years. I agree. Another thing, another thing that Mayweather did too, man. I remember something else that pissed me off, and it was one of the first videos I made on YouTube. He beat De La Hoya, and then instead of like fighting a Winky Wright or a Vernon Forrest, he wanted to fight um, De La Hoya a second time. You remember they were trying to negotiate a second fight? Yeah, yeah. With money. De La Hoya and Mayweather. So we had like a little boycott kind of thing on YouTube, like, man, you know, Mayweather should do something else. We don't want to see him fight. They were hoarded. And even though the fight was kind of close or whatever, some people would say it was close, 
I think Mayweather won hands down, but some people say the Oscar De La Hoya held his own against Mayweather. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They right. say he did. So, you know, I'm just saying, Styles made fights, you know. Um, maybe if that was Vernon Forrest or Winky Wright, they might have pulled it off. You know what I'm saying? So why didn't he defend his junior middleweight? You know, he's only just going around taking money fights, right. which I don't blame him for doing that so he could you know, um, have a stable financial um, background or um, setting or whatever, but he, um, he 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 took that route. He didn't take the route of legacy. He didn't take the legacy route. Okay. That's all I'm saying. He did not take the legacy route. You guys really need to go back and look at his record really good. And you could even go back and look at some of the rankings. Um, I was able to find out that some of the rankings of the time are listed. So yeah. you could even go back and look I'll at some that. of the rankings, even though those are biased yeah. at that point. But you can still see there was other names there that he could have fought. Yeah, it's a lesson you know, you to understand that he always took the money fight. And then some of the fights were not really money fights, like Baldemir. Okay, that might have been for some belts, but the belts don't even mean shit anyway. Right. So Baldemir was a bullshit fight. He could have taken any, uh, uh, all kind of other fights over Baldemir. That yeah, would have meant more to his legacy than having a belt. Well, you know, I, I don't even have a problem with him fighting Baldemir because Baldemir was looked at as the, 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 you know, the champion at that time. My problem is after beating Baldemir, you don't defend that title against Walter Waits. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you're, you're trying to prove that you're the best. You know, you have to build a legacy, get some title defenses. Like, some people say uh, you're not the champion until you defend your title. Remember Hagel used to say that all the time? Like, yeah, you, you're not a champion until you defend your title. That's what a lot of people say. A lot of fighters feel that way. So, you know, that's how I feel, man. But, um... People took advantage of the era where um, there's so many alphabet built to grab. And then Pacquiao took advantage of that era. And they made up these new records. So, eight times champ and, you know, five. But you don't mean nothing no more because all you got to do is win a, a, a ABC or, you know, a CBA yeah. belt from world belt and you consider that considered to be a championship. There's so many um, different sanctions and bodies and, and um, belts now and more weight classes now than there used to be. So that's why you cannot compare the Pacquiao and the Mayweather to fighters of yesterday. Right. For, for right. plenty of reasons. Those are just some of the reasons that we listed off. Yep. And <laughs> I mean, I hope people, that's real simple, man. Like, I hope people understand that, man, because it's, it's really no comparison. You know, like I said, Henry Armstrong with 19 title defenses at welterweight. Clearly, clearly, he's done more at welterweight than Floyd Mayweather. Floyd Mayweather really hasn't built any legacy in any weight division except for 130 pounds, where those were his best fights, Corrales and uh, Hernandez. You know, eight title defenses. After that, it's been, you know, uh, three times he defended his title at lightweight. You know, and then after that, you got shit, except for Ricky Hatton. You know, and it, it, like, come on, man. Look what Andre Ward is doing in, two, in a two-year span compared to what Floyd Mayweather has done in nine years. Yeah. You can't yeah. pretend to compare him. Who else did Floyd fight that made him, that showed that he was the most skilled fighter? Who did he fight? Like, how many athletic fighters did he fight, first of all? Hardly none. He fought Zab Judah. It looked like... In the first part of the fight, Zab Judah was getting, you know, he was getting his team. Right. So, to me, I would have to have seen him against several different styles to make an assessment when comparing him to guys like Hearns or Leonard, who faced several different styles. Even the, the proper welterweights in the mid-80s all fought each other. You got Mark Breland, Marlon Stahler, Lloyd Hunnigan, and all of those guys. They all fought each other. Yeah. You know, um, Donald Curry, you know, all of these guys took big risks. The, then you have Colonel Hood for them in the 90s. He fought Chavez, you know. It, you know, they, they somehow they were able, he fought Chavez, he fought Trinidad, he fought De La Hoya. You know, they were able to make these fights happen, but today there's all kinds of excuses. And still, he still hasn't done nothing. I'm looking at his record right now. I'm looking at his record. I don't see nobody here on his record that makes him this this great fighter that y'all say. Where's the 16 world champions? I don't see them. I see this little stuff, little belts and stuff, but 
We already know about the um, pound for pound system. I don't see that where he's on top in 16 years. He started out here in the 90s. He wasn't on top yet. Shoot, but I have a 2000 ranking here that Floyd Mayweather's not even in yet. He's not even ranked in 2000 here. Um, I got the first ranking here from him in 2001. I mean, so where's the 16 years of dominance? I, I don't see it. You yeah. guys are listening to what comes out of Floyd Mayweather's mouth and you're just rolling with it. He gets on the video, and, um, interviews that I've been on top for 16 years, you know, um, I beat 60 world champions, and, you know, he, he, I've seen the, the interviews where he's, like, saying, what can I do that would be enough? You know, I beat 60 world champions. You don't do none of that shit that you're saying you did, though, dog. And that's all I'm saying. I was the flow before you motherfuckers was flow mode. I was the flow mode in the Olympics. Right. So that's all I'm saying about that, bro. Mm, I hear you. Uh, indeed, man. It's... it's <laughs> It's, I'll tell you, man, I'm to the point, I really don't care. I like pissing people off because, you know, I used to try to, you know, I do a lot of shit on my channel, you know what I'm saying, to help Floyd Mayweather. Real strategic shit. And I take a lot of heat from certain people who know what I'm doing. But it's the idiots out there, like the simple-minded, you know, open and shut door motherfuckers who just can't open their mind and think, well, why would he say something like that? Why would him and blood say that? What is the, what's the, what's the another angle you can look at? They just can't think like that, man. It's like, they so elementary minded to where, oh man, he said Floyd Mayweather was a chicken. Well, man, oh man, you, what you, like, shut up. I'm not even going to waste my time trying to explain it because you motherfuckers are slow. You just don't get it. It's a lot of strategic shit that's being done. I do more to help Floyd Mayweather and his legacy on my channel than probably any motherfucker on that YouTube. But yet, you too slow to pick up on what the fuck I'm doing. Okay? You too slow. But like I said, it's a lot of people who are not black who know what the fuck I'm doing and they talk shit about it all the time. But slow, dumbass idiots don't get it. And I just feel like, you know... I like Floyd Mayweather as a fighter. I think he, I think he's, he's the best fighter of our generation. It's my opinion. Okay. Um, I like a lot of stuff about Floyd. I defend the dude. Okay. Now, I just don't like. What irritates me is where people are putting this guy. There are too many people. Our heroes. Some of you niggas need daddies. I'm telling you right now. Some of y'all need male role models like a motherfucker because the shit, the level of of, of, of nut hugging that I see I don't give a fuck who it is the level of nut hugging I see for Floyd Mayweather for some of you brothers is, is absolutely unacceptable and borderline homosexual if you ask me I have never in my life seen this on any athlete the way I see this on him okay and you put yourself in a position to where this guy can do no wrong like he's a prophet or some shit he fuck around and go out there and do some dumb shit and you acting like he's he's the greatest thing since sliced bread, that shit's gonna be on you now. You gonna be you gonna own that. You gonna oh man, making excuses for him like that like y'all did when he got in trouble. Every time Floyd get in trouble, people run around making excuses for him. Somebody else black do something, another black celebrity do some dumb shit, we jump all over them talking about how they bad role models and how uh they in the Illuminati and they doing this and they doing that and what are they doing for the community. Not with Floyd Mayweather though. He get a pass. I don't. I've never seen this in my life. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, it's not about hating this dude, okay? Because I don't hate Floyd Mayweather. Like you know what I'm saying? I don't hate this man. I love Floyd Mayweather, okay? I've been watching Floyd Mayweather loyally since 1997. I didn't even. I ain't gonna lie. I didn't even see him in the Olympics. I watched him when he came out. 1997, 98 was my shit with Floyd Mayweather. I've been watching him since then. A lot of you guys. Wasn't even old enough to be watching them. So stop lying. Some of you motherfuckers got about 2005, you started watching boxing, and you went back and watched all his fucking old fights on YouTube, and you're now trying to regurgitate shit like you was there. He wasn't fucking there, man, anyway. So what I, man, I've been supporting Floyd Mayweather way before this YouTube shit, okay? Way before Oscar De La Hoya, because Oscar De La Hoya seemed to be the, uh, you know, the start with a lot of these fucking extreme fans. On Pacquiao side and Mayweather. It's like once Pacquiao beat Oscar De La Hoya, that's where the Pac Tars came out. Uh, Mayweather beat De La Hoya, then now here come the flow modes, you know what I'm saying? And then they don't want to hear you say nothing bad about either one of these guys because they are, like, they, it's like they got some secret love affair with these motherfuckers or some shit, man. 
Go get you a role model. That's all I'm saying. Well, see, they give it away when they say things such as um, 16 um, world, um, um, 16 years um, at the top and fighting 16 world champions. They give it away then because they are not mentioning the politics that are involved in boxing and the ranking system. So, therefore, I just have an idea that they don't understand the ranking system. They don't understand the politics. They don't understand how many fighters were not being given a chance to to fight uh, Floyd Mayweather or Manny Pacquiao. Now, just the fact that Floyd Mayweather Pacquiao came to the division to the division about 2008 2009, he came to the welterweight division. Okay, but him and Floyd Mayweather have been in the same neck of the woods and weight, and the fight has been discussed since around 2007. I think around the first time where I really heard people talking about. Mayweather versus Pacquiao, for me anyway, was around 07. Right. Okay, so just the fact that these guys could be at the top for all this time since 07 now, and they still haven't made a fight, how could anyone rank any of them number one? Yeah. Pound for pound. And they still left the division a mess. Right now, between the welterweight and the junior middleweight, we have total chaos in that area right now. We yeah. have, um, Guys like Bradley, you have um, Guerrero, you have shit, even suckers like Malinachi, you have Kel Brook, you have Bailey, you have Lopez, you have Berto, you have Alexander yeah. in there, then the junior middleweight, you have Laura Coda, Alvarez, um, you know, uh, Trout, Kirkland, um, Bun Ridge, you know, all yeah. these guys. But no one has dominated that division. Do you understand that there's too many fighters? Like, and you look, to be calling somebody the best, and none of these guys are fighting each other. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm saying. They none of them are fighting. All them guys you just named, and they're not fighting each other. Like fuck that. That's why I don't have to. I rank Andre Ward now as number one pound for pound because he's fighting, and he's fighting the best competition out there in his weight class. Ain't nobody else doing that. Everybody else got some excuse. Oh, well, I can't do it because of this. I can't do it because of that. Okay. Well, how long do we gotta keep? Look, I'm not finna, I'm not no sucker. I'm not gonna be taking on no fucking long ride and just getting somebody rich because that's what's with these guys are not stupid. They understand how to just like I'm me and me and blood manipulated you motherfuckers into getting mad when we did that video. That's the same shit that these fighters do and promoters do when they want to manipulate a situation. Mayweather and Pacquiao, if these motherfuckers want to fight, they would have been fought. Okay, but. Like, like they say, it's no money in the cure. The money is in the medicine. So let's keep milking these motherfuckers. Let's keep having them post videos about Mayweather Pacquiao, who's ducking who. Or let's keep saying about talk about the drug test. Or let's talk about the 50-50 split. Let's talk about this and that. It's a bunch of crap but shit. By the time this shit over with, both of them going to be the made $200 million. And you still ain't going to have no goddamn fight. Nope. Nope. And another thing, too, about Ward. Ward just proves that you can make it work. In, in these days, because people continue to say, well, Bob Aaron has something to do with it, this and that. Man, come on, if these guys really wanted to fight each other, <coughs> they would make it happen. Trust me. Yeah. Don't sit here and believe too much, don't read too much in, into giving Bob Aaron and them too much power now. They've got a lot of power. But their fighters could have made this shit happen. All these guys that you have between uh, welterweight, even junior welterweight and some junior middleweight, all these guys, who's the best between all of them? Shit, it's like damn near 20 of them. They ain't fighting, they're all they, they coming on here fighting um, other people. You know what I'm saying? That we ain't never heard of and shit, that we gotta go back and do some research on, because we don't know who the fuck these people are. Yeah. These guys are not fighting each other. Yeah, you and know. With all these, okay. um, you know, um, uh, fucked up politics and 30 days, same day weigh-ins and all that shit. I just say, man, go back to the, to the regular shit. Just have a Walter and a middleweight. You know what I'm saying? Give them a 20, um, pound span between each fight. I don't give a fuck, man. Yeah. Just fucking fight. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just fight. Because we can't determine who a pound for pound. Now, there's no way I could put Mayweather on my pound for pound number one. How can I? You got so too many people around. And what has Mayweather even did? To, to be my pound for pound, what, the victory he had over, um, when he stole Ortiz at that time? I, mean, I don't blame him for stealing Ortiz. <laughs> he stole him, though. The, the fact remains, he stole. Did he not steal Ortiz, though, bro? Did he not steal Ortiz? I'm just saying, did he not steal him? 
Yeah, he's calling him. He's calling him. He's calling him. He's calling him. But you can't blame him for doing it. Right, right, right. Hell yeah, the man headbutted him. But still, though, that's not something I could add to a legacy fight. I mean, he's calling him. I'm not adding that to the legacy compilation. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, you know, I look at it like this, man. I'm, Floyd Mayweather, you know, is, to me, him and Pacquiao, like, they the type of guys where they don't, they said themselves, a, a belt don't do nothing but collect dust. Mayweather and Pacquiao have said similar shit. Like, well, they're not, they don't give a fuck about belts. So if that's the case, if you don't give a fuck about belts, that means you don't give a fuck about defending your title against legitimate opponents. Therefore, I don't, as a fan, don't have to give a fuck about where I place you on my list. You know what I mean? Because you... I understand that this is about money for me. This is about feeding my family. Cool. Great. That's beautiful. Do what you got to do. But I'm not obligated to keep, just because you're undefeated, to keep you as the number one guy when you're not fighting the number one contenders. You're fighting who you want to fight. You're fighting, okay, uh, he going to bring me the most money. Let me fight him. That's cool. That's your right to do that. Right? I'm not saying you shouldn't. But I, as a fan, have a right to say, since you're doing that, I'm going to put Andre Ward, a guy who's not making a lot of money for one, and a guy who's fighting the best competition in his weight class, who's cleaned out his weight class as number one. I have a right to do that as a fan. Okay, tell me this. What do you think about this damn mom? Um, this is another thing I've been reading a lot. I've actually had people hit me up and saying that Ward drained um, Dawson, and they're comparing that to Pacquiao oh, yeah. draining Cotto and Margarito. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, what do you think about that, man? Well, I knew that was going to happen anyway. Because that, People are only doing that because you, 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 when you come out saying that war is number one pound for pound, now you're starting to hurt the feelings of uh, Manny Pacquiao and Floyd Mayweather fans, hardcore fans, and they're going to now start to attack Andre Ward because... You know, they feel threatened. They feel, But listen, all, it's going to be over for y'all in a minute anyway. Because Mayweather Pacquiao is about to retire. I give it 2013. Them guys going to be retired. Y'all going to have to find somebody else anyway. Y'all going to have to move on with your lives, man. Stop holding on to that shit, okay? Stop holding. Like, let this shit go. And they, that's the only reason they're attacking Andre Ward now is because they feel that Floyd Mayweather's position or Manny Pacquiao's position is being threatened by anybody. It don't matter who it is. It could be... Like I told you, mark my words, it's gonna happen. When Adrian Broner, if he still stays undefeated in five they're already years, already attacking him. They're calling him a Floyd wannabe. Right, right. They're already attacking him because he's getting too much props. He he seems like he's gonna be a threat to uh you know take the crown from somebody. So oh, let's attack him. Let's bash him right away. You know, it, it, it's ridiculous, man. But like I said, I really don't give a shit, man. I, like, you know, people are, are sheep to me, and it's easy to manipulate motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? And y'all too slow. To understand what the fuck I try to explain to certain brothers I be talking to on the phone like man this is why I do certain shit this is why I try to tell them okay and I see other people who don't know me who don't have never spoke to me don't understand the moves I make or why I say certain shit I'm actually doing more to help Floyd Mayweather than you coming in the comment section talking about Floyd Mayweather's the greatest fighter of all time Floyd Mayweather's the greatest fighter of all time shut up man you don't know what the fuck you talking about man let the let let Nature take its course. Guys just ain't, you know, you're not picking up on, you're not very smart. You're not. And that's why, yeah. you know, they're not, they're not very smart, man. Yeah, it's um, like history. What it's going to see in this era is an era where, and you know, maybe guys like Ward can help us get back on track, but what they're going to see is an era of what could have been, the could have um, factor is always going to be there when looking back on Pacquiao and Mayweather. Because not only did they not fight each other, but they let that those three divisions right there. I mean, I mean, if, we, if you really want to compare them to Ray Robinson and Armstrong, there was no division between welterweight and middleweight back in that time. Okay, so they let that whole span between them build up a whole bunch of fighters, and now we got nothing but a big wreck. And people still want to call them the pound for pound, and they ain't even clean that picture. Either one of them <laughs> stepped up and cleaned up the picture. Neither right. one of them. They fought the same opponents. Always recycled names. Shane Mosley, um, and then Margarito getting the um, shot against Pacquiao. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and and another thing too is that when Dawson, okay, when Dawson moved down, first of all, he said he called that man out. So Warren right. said, "If hey, you want to fight me, you come down to 168." He went down, but this was a man who was pretty established at 175, okay? So he came down, and 
he fought war, but it was war with the belt that was on the line. That's right. Now, when Pacquiao was draining motherfuckers, he, he had Cotto move down, and, and he couldn't even fight for what the walkerweight limit is. Right, you right. know what I'm saying? The walkerweight limit goes to 147. So why, you know, why are you making something special for that particular belt? So does that count now? Should I count that as one of his belts now? Just like with Margarito. What the fuck was Margarito doing in the ring with him anyway? That he took that ass whipping by Shane Mosley. And not only that, loaded his guard and was suspended. Right. So, but this is one of the titles that y'all are giving Pacquiao credit for, though, right? I'm just saying, you know, you, you know um, Pacquiao and Mayweather ain't did shit in years. The media hype, the, the cherry pickers. Both of them are fucking cherry pickers to me. And that's how I look at it. I hear you, man. I hear you. And it's, it's, it's getting... Look, man. I believe now... I used to be all big on that Mayweather Pacquiao shit, man. But I, I just... You know, I start to peep game, man. You know, as years go by, you start to recognize shit and realize... Hold up, man. Something ain't right about this shit, man. Hold up. You know, like all the double talk they be doing and shit in interviews. Yeah, we'll fight. Oh, no, we won't. And whenever one thing gets settled, it's another thing. that They got another obstacle. And, and I just realize what's going on here, man. These two cats is pulling off one of the biggest hoaxes in boxing history, man. And I'm not going to be a part of that shit. You know what I'm saying? Y'all can go ahead and believe this shit if you want to. I'm not going to be a part of it. You know what I'm saying? I, I fucks with, you know, Floyd when he fight. I don't, um, you know, I don't buy any Manny Pacquiao fights. But I'm not going to be played.